Hi everyone. Today I'm going to tell you the top five things you need to know about the CDK inhibitors palpocyclib, ribocyclib and abemocyclib, otherwise known as Ibrance, Kiskali and Vizinio when it comes to treating primary and secondary breast cancer. I'm going to cover how they work, why you might have them, is one better than the other, what the side effects are and why they stop working. I'm Dr. Liz O'Riordan. I'm a breast surgeon who's had breast cancer twice and the author of The Complete Guide to Breast Cancer. I do the research so you don't have to. Welcome to my channel. As a special bonus, at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you about five new treatment options for people with ER positive disease if your cancer does start to grow on the CDK inhibitors. So, how do they work? Palpocyclib, ribocyclib and abemocyclib inhibit two enzymes called CDK4 and CDK6. Now, this is where I have to stop myself getting a bit geeky because my PhD looked at these enzymes in thyroid cancer cells. CDK4 and 6 control whether a cell can divide. They attach to a protein called cyclin D1. This jumpstarts the cell to make extra DNA so it can split into two. If the DNA is damaged, a healthy cell has checkpoints that make it die instead. But breast cancer cells have mutations. That means they can override the checkpoint. They can keep on dividing like a traffic light that's stuck on green. All three drugs block the CDK enzyme so they can't work. This means that the traffic light is now red and the cancer cells stop growing. But it also means that healthy cells don't grow and that's why you get side effects. Who can take them? At the moment, the drugs are used to treat patients with both metastatic and early breast cancer. Let's start with the metastatic group. All three drugs are used to treat stage four breast cancer that is ER positive and HER2 negative. And that means breast cancer that has spread to sites like the liver, the bones and the lungs. They were introduced a few years ago when evidence from the Mona Lisa, Paloma and Monarch trials showed they significantly slowed down cancer growth. If you've just been diagnosed, your first line of treatment should be a CDK inhibitor together with an aromatase inhibitor like letrozole. If you're young and still having periods, your ovaries will need to be switched off with Zolodex. If you've already been treated with hormonal therapy and your cancer has started to grow, you could have a CDK inhibitor as your second line of treatment. You have it together with a drug called fulvestrant, otherwise known as Fasladex, and this drug sits in the estrogen receptors on breast cancer cells and stops estrogen attaching. You carry on taking the drugs until they stop working. But what about people with breast cancer that hasn't spread? Well, sadly, 30% of ER positive breast cancers do come back, and this can happen up to 30 years in the future. The highest risk is in the first three years after surgery. The Monarch E trial showed that abemocyclib, otherwise known as Vizinio, when given together with hormone therapy, can further reduce the risk of recurrence. In the UK, it is only offered to patients with ER positive, HER2 negative breast cancer and a high risk of recurrence. That means that you need to have at least four involved auxiliary lymph nodes or one to three involved nodes and either grade three disease or a cancer that's larger than five centimeters in size. You take the drug for two years together with hormone therapy. However, ribocyclib could be another option in the future. The Natalie trial gave ribocyclib and hormonal therapy to a similar group of patients. They took the drug for three years at a slightly lower dose to reduce the risk of side effects more on those later. The trial showed that ribocyclib again significantly reduced the risk of recurrence regardless of lymph node involvement and it's now being repeated in a larger group of patients so watch this space. All three drugs come as tablets that you take every day for three weeks and then you have a week off. In the beginning you'll need to have blood tests every two weeks to monitor your progress and if you're on ribocyclib you'll also need to have an ECG or a tracing of your heart as well. Now, pay attention, this is important. You cannot eat grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice when taking the drugs because grapefruit increases the amount of the drug in your blood. That is really, really important. Which CDK inhibitor is the best? So far, the three drugs haven't been compared against each other in a clinical trial. So we can't say for definite that one is better than the other. Oncologists think they all work equally well. There have been seven randomized trials with all three drugs that have shown that they have a similar effect on progression-free survival of more than 50%, which is higher than you'd get with chemotherapy for women with metastatic disease. I'll put the link to the paper in the notes below. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video.
What are the side effects of the CDK inhibitors? Although they're not traditional chemotherapy, they do have side effects that can be unpleasant. The commonest ones are nausea, increased risk of infection, anemia, liver changes, shortness of breath, a skin rash, and diarrhea. They can also cause hair thinning and hair loss. Now, with a bemocyclib, the diarrhea can be really, really bad, leading to dehydration or infection, and quick and easy access to a toilet is something to think about, and you may find it difficult to travel for the same reason. It can normally be managed with antidiarrheal tablets, but you may need to have a lower dose of the CDK inhibitor. There are less common side effects, and these include severe inflammation of the lungs called pneumonitis, and ribocyclic can also cause a life-threatening skin condition called toxic epidermal necrosis. Your doctors will monitor you carefully whilst you're taking the drugs. Why do the drugs stop working? There are two reasons why this happens. The first is that the cancer already has a mutation that gives it resistance, or it develops resistance really quickly in the first couple of weeks, and this happens in about 20% of patients. It means that the CDK inhibitors are never going to work. With the other 80% of patients, the cancers eventually develop resistance through different mutations over several months or years. Scientists are currently looking at biomarkers that might help us work out which patients have that resistance so we can give you the right treatment for you and your individual cancer. And now onto the bonus section. If you've got metastatic ER positive HER2 negative breast cancer, what are the treatment options when the CDK inhibitors stop working? One option may be to switch to a different CDK inhibitor. There is some evidence to suggest this might work, but we don't have accurate trial data yet. There are five other options, and this is where genomic medicine will play a huge role in the future. We'll be able to screen cancers for specific mutations and treat them accordingly. The first drug is Everolimus. This inhibits a protein called MTOR, or mTOR, which some cancer cells use to develop resistance to drugs like letrozole. Based on the Bolero 2 trial, it is given with an aromatase inhibitor called exemestane. The second drug is called alpelacib, and about 40% of ER-positive HER2-negative breast cancers have a PI3 kinase mutation. The SOLAR1 trial gave it to patients with that mutation whose cancers had grown on a CDK inhibitor, and it significantly slowed down growth compared to chemotherapy. However, it's not a nice drug to take, and a quarter of the patients in the trial stopped taking it because of the side effects. The third drug is called Elasistrant, or Orserdu, which was approved in America in January 2023 for patients with an ESR1 mutation whose cancer has grown on a CDK inhibitor. And this was based on the results of the Emerald trial, and I hope that will soon be available in the UK. The fourth drug is NHER2, which is normally used to treat HER2-positive cancers. The DESTINY Breast 4 trial gave it to stage 4 ER-positive breast cancer patients with a low level of HER2 receptor expression whose cancers had grown after one or two treatments, and it slowed down the time to progression compared to patients who were given chemotherapy alone. The fifth drug is really hard to pronounce, so I'm just going to call it TRODELV, and this was previously only available to patients with triple negative breast cancer. But in February 2023, the FDA approved its use for patients with ER positive breast cancer that had grown after hormone therapy, a CDK inhibitor, and at least two lines of chemotherapy. The TROPICS 2 trial showed it improved progression free and overall survival, with an extra 20% of patients still alive at 12 months. So there is hope on the horizon. If you want to know more about the latest breast cancer treatments, click on this video that covers groundbreaking research that could stop breast cancer cells spreading to the lungs altogether. If you've got any further questions, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. I'm Dr. Liz Reardon, and thanks for watching my channel.